Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the upcoming extreme pattern that we're going to be in. We're going to have tons of hot weather in the eastern United States. I've been talking about that already. We're going to have some severe weather for the plains and also some colder weather out west. I want to mention that our comment of the days are back officially starting today. So for today's comment of the day, I want to know how do you think this past spring has gone so far? We're obviously nearing the end. We have about one week left. So let me know in the comments down below how you think it went. And I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. I was obviously out of town, like I mentioned. So that's why I had to stop doing it. Because they were all pre-made. So how would I, you know, record a comment? Of the it would just be all over the place if you think about it. So I had to stop doing those for a week, unfortunately. But they are back starting today. I had many people asking about that. But they're officially back. So, yeah. Leave a comment down below. And I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video, guys. Now, we're starting things out, we're taking a look at the temperature anomalies. I'm going to start talking about that heat wave and the cold weather out west. And then at the end, we're going to work our way towards that severe weather, which could be pretty bad as well. Now, first things first, this Sunday, today, from the time I'm making this video, is just super hot. It's going to be very hot in the eastern United States. I hope everybody gets out there and enjoys it. I think that the, after this upcoming week, it could possibly come to an end. The GFS is showing that at least. So we want to soak it in and enjoy it because we might go back to some cooler weather for a little bit at least. You can see there's very cold weather out west. I mentioned that before as well. That's our negative p and That's very, very cold temperatures out west. The temperatures out east in those browns are about 15 to 30 degrees above normal. So this is just very, very far above normal temperatures. And those temperatures out west are actually very far below normal. So there's two extremes going on there for sure. And by the time we're reaching about the p.m. hours there of Monday, uh, so tomorrow, I can see there's still some very hot temperatures out east and still some pretty cold temperatures out west. Not nearly as cold, but still... Uh, some colder than normal conditions, uh, for sure, to say the least, compared to what is typical. Now, by the time we are reaching Wednesday afternoon, that's going to be May 26th. This is that beginning of that second heat wave, like I've been mentioning. Uh, you can see those browns extending up the, the east coast, basically, from the Carolinas all the way up through New England. And that is those very far above normal temperatures here. Probably 90s, especially on the southern extent there, North Carolina, Virginia, up through Pennsylvania and Maryland. Uh, and, and possibly even New Jersey, but north of there it's going to be a little bit harder to get 90s. It is possible, though, for sure. We can see there's still some colder than normal conditions out west, for sure. Uh, by this point, the greens, the blues, indicating some pretty far below normal temperatures for this time of year. So it is going to be quite chilly up there, uh, and you already are in that pattern, so you're probably already used to it. So it's going to continue on how it's pretty much gone uh, for quite a while now, uh, and, and it, it will come to an end eventually. Uh, and probably by the next couple of frames, actually, that we're going to show in a moment. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be kind of extreme. Uh, it's going to be very cold, especially towards the beginning of the time frame we've been talking about, Sunday, Monday. And then it's going to generally become more and more closer to normal, and then eventually above normal for you guys out west. So what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to take a look at Thursday, then we're going to take a look at Friday, and then we're going to move on to that severe weather in just a moment. All right, so here we are taking a look here at about the p.m. hours there on Thursday. As you can see, we still have some pretty far above normal temperatures in the eastern half of the country. But we also have some above normal temperatures entering into the western United States as well. So this is kind of an interesting pattern we have here. And what this does is since there's kind of a ridge on both sides, as you can see, this forces colder air to work its way from the north down southward in the central United States in the middle. Uh, so it's kind of a blocking pattern there on both sides that's forcing the cold air to go down the middle of the United States, as you can see. This is a pretty common pattern, and we've, we've seen this from time to time. Uh, it, it's one that takes place quite frequently, actually. Uh, and by the time we're reaching Friday afternoon, you can see still the southeast dealing with those very hot temperatures again. Uh, but we do see the colder than normal conditions making their way into the central and kind of northeastern United States as well. Again, that pattern could begin to break up towards later next week. Uh, so we're going to be watching very closely for that. Or I guess it's later this week because we're at Sunday already. Um, but regardless, in about seven days or so, this should be kind of breaking up. It shouldn't be a heat wave at least. Uh, and we're, we're going to need to see what that early June pattern is going to have in store for us. Obviously, I will have videos about that. Uh, but for now, uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. My June forecast, by the way, is coming out on the 1st of June. My summer forecast should be coming out a little bit before that. So I'm expecting to make that at some point this week, my official summer forecast. Uh, as well as bringing you guys an updated hurricane forecast. So there's a lot of exciting things coming up, uh, and I'm probably going to make some more winter thoughts videos coming up soon because I know you guys eat those up as well. 
So what we're going to do here is take a look at some of that severe weather that's upcoming. Uh, there is some, it's not, uh, it's not like a severe weather outbreak or anything, but we do have a pretty significant boost in the amount of severe weather we're going to be seeing actually in the upcoming pattern. So first off, just for day one, just to get us started here, uh, you can see that we do have a, we have two separate marginal risks actually. We have one up there for the Northeast and then we have one there that extends all the way from Texas bordering on Mexico all the way up to North Dakota bordering on Canada. So there's a massive marginal risk there that extends from basically uh, border to border. But you do have a slight risk within there that in the yellow as well, which is where we begin to see some more scattered severe weather. And then we have an enhanced risk there for South Dakota and Nebraska. That's where it becomes a little bit more widespread. For those individual outlooks, first things first, we have our wind outlook. Within the two green areas, we have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location of damaging wind. Within the yellow region, we have a 15% chance, and then in the red region, a 3% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location. That is our biggest threat because as we move on to the hail outlook, we only have a 5% chance and then a 15% chance there for the plains. And then the tornado risk, uh, this is a little bit elevated for tornadoes, but we have a 2% chance, which actually extends from Texas up through Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, Nebraska, South Dakota, and North Dakota. Then we have a 5% chance there mostly for South Dakota, but also for a little bit of Nebraska as well. Uh, that's also within 25 miles of a given location. So what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the model guidance for this day one severe weather threat for Sunday, May 23rd. And then we're going to take a look at day two as well and take a look at those individual outlooks as well as some model guidance. And then we're going to close out the video. All right, now here we are taking a look at our cape. And as you can see, it's not very elevated actually for the day today. Mostly below 1,000 amounts, which usually doesn't mean that much severe weather, but uh, given the wind pattern we'll be in, it will be possible. Uh, not necessarily a high cape event here. We have generally about 500 to 1,000 in the greens showing up, which again is just not a very elevated amount of, of cape at all. Our dew points are going to be in the lower 60s, upper 50s, which again is just not very high. Uh, and that's probably what's causing the cape amounts to be lower because cape is basically a math equation between the dew points and the temperatures. Uh, so one of, when one of those isn't very favorable, the cape is much, much lower. Uh, the temperatures are going to be in the upper 70s, which is fine. But again, those dew points are just so low. Uh, and that's what's causing uh, the, the thermodynamics to not really be uh, <laughs> that great for this event. Uh, the shear here is actually one of the driving forces behind this severe weather threat because we do have actually a moderate high amount of shear and that also explains why we have a higher wind event risk rather than a hail event. Uh, usually high cape events tend to be more hail related and then high shear events tend to be more wind and tornado related. Uh, when you have both you get kind of all different types of severe weather possible obviously but when you have just the shear it's mostly a wind driven event uh, and that's what I expect throughout the day today. For our day two risk, you can see we have another marginal risk extending also very far south to very far north, but we do have a slight risk within there as well for Kansas and Nebraska, so a much less elevated severe weather threat expected tomorrow as of right now. Uh, the day two wind outlook, we have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the green areas, a 15% chance there within the yellow. Uh, same story for the hail, it actually doesn't even move at all, so the same exact risks for hail. And then we also have a day two tornado outlook with a 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location. We have there for Kansas and Nebraska that 2% chance. Uh, for this day, we have a little bit more cape around. 1,000 to 2,000 amounts are kind of very isolated but still around in those yellow regions, the green to yellow regions. Uh, the dew points are going to be in the mid-60s, which explains that kind of jump in the cape, like I said. Because again, the dew points and the temperatures are what affects that. And then the temperatures are going to be, again, in the mid to upper 70s. So that, combined with the higher um, dew points, is going to allow for some higher cape. Therefore, a little bit more threat of hail is what I would expect. Uh, and maybe more of a more supercell storm mode possible there. Anyway, for our confidence tab, as you noticed, we've only talked about things that are within the next few days. Uh, so we're at a 6 out of 6 for this one. I'm very confident in all of the things I talked about today. We don't have a comment of the day today because I didn't ask you guys for one yesterday. But starting tomorrow, we will be featuring those comment of the days again. I'm very, very excited to have those back. It helps me to interact with you guys, and it's a lot of fun as well. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dopey Nagel, Little the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary's, John Felici, and Dwight Phelan. 
If you would like to be part of this super awesome Patreon page uh, and the patron end screen here, you can do so by checking out that awesome Patreon page and joining today, and then you can be on this, uh, which I love. Anyway, for today's channel membership highlight of the day, I would like to thank you all for supporting the channel as well, but especially our weather top dogs, Hair Farms 1, alongside Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out, and be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.